Hey everybody. So uh, as promised, what I want to do is uh, bring in friend of the show, Digital Day from Crazy for Cryptos, because it's been, my man, it's been a long time. When was the last time we, we chatted? At least a year and a half. I know. It's crazy. It might, I think it might be close to two years. No, it's a year and a half. It was the last time we chatted was when we did that video where a uh, guy with Coin Bureau uh, had his pre-recorded um, oh, yeah. prediction thing. That was, um, oh God, yeah. when was that? That was probably yeah, January 2021. Was that when it was? Yeah, okay. so about a year and a half, you're right. So it, yeah, it, okay. if anybody doesn't remember this, this was where I did a, I did a great price prediction for Bitter was going to go at $30. And not only did it not go at $30, but the entire, <laughs> the entire place crumbled. I did get Cardano and uh, EOS and some other things right, but yeah, it is what mm -hmm. it is. Price predictions to me personally, I don't think I'll ever do them again, Dave. <laughs> well, it, I tell you, it gets uh, viewership though. Oh, yeah, it, it, it gets viewership, but it's just, it's just a shoot in the dark. So these days, I just want to get people in who, who have their ears to the ground and know what's going on with crypto. So Dave, today, I got a couple questions for you. First of all, I just want to know what's going on new in Thailand. The second thing is, since you've been around longer than me as far as in the crypto space, how do you see this bear market playing out? And then the last one is, uh, you got any projects going on? Because you, my friend, were the first one to talk to me about Theta and T-Fuel. I mean, Theta, when you first talked about it, was like pennies or something like that. And T-Fuel wouldn't even exist. I mean, it was like super, super low. I can't remember the exact price. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Theta, Theta turned out okay and T-Fuel turned out okay. Not everything turned out like we uh, anticipated, like you said. You know, um, things, uh, things get hacked, things get... Um, sanctioned uh i mean it's really kind of hard to sanction a blockchain itself but um there's all kinds of great 2022 has just been nuts like everything has just been crumbling all around us though it's been crazy oh, it sucks it sucks but you know what these the ones that can get through the hard times are the ones that don't enjoy the prosperous times it's just getting to that point so yeah. let me ask you this man what's new in thailand besides all those green screens that you use which thank you for the green screen for this one. this is very nice how you That's sent nice me this setup. Yeah, it was a nice large yeah. green screen. See, Dave, yeah. if if you don't follow Dave over at Crazy for Cryptos, here's his here's his YouTube channel. He uses these apparently apparently these massive green screens to make it look like he's in Thailand. So, what's new over there, though? <laughs> what's new uh, without the green screens? What's really what the reality is is um, <laughs> still in Thailand. Been here a long time, and um, what's new is um, just about a week ago, it's official. Uh, started a 501c3 charity called Give for Good, oh. and the number four, like so, it's G for G, and you know, crazy for crypto, C for C. So yeah. uh, Give Give for Good is official 501c3 charity, and so we're helping um, for starters, we're helping the uh, Thai, the Thai kids, the orphans, and providing them with um, uh, fixing their shelters and food, and uh, also giving them activities. You know, it's not humans are meant to be you know just not to be survivors we're meant to have experiences too right and um so we're sending them to uh like a beach holiday uh just when was it maybe about four months ago three or four months ago they went about 50 kids went mm -hmm. to the beach for the first time ever first time ever so what yeah yeah yeah, yeah, in thailand. I mean, yeah in thailand with all the beautiful and amazing beaches uh, abundant beaches here this that the kids these are kids that grew up in the mountains most of them and for the first time ever, they went to the beach and they just had a, an absolute blast. Um, so we're doing a lot of things here with that charity. So now we're totally official, totally transparent, totally audible if needed. And um, yeah, man, loving it. Just we're staying, staying busy. We're doing the um, doing the game too, the play to earn game. We can talk about it now or later or, or never. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that sounds pretty good. I mean, so like that's great, Dave, because like these days, I think there's a lot of people just it's a. It's a me and me only type of thing. But if you take a look at it and take a step back, how much time do we have on this planet? And I think the only thing that really matters is, is really how we treat people and, and how we do things to improve people around us. And let's say, okay, so, so here's an example. Like you reach out to me. I did that, uh, that piece for your Patreon where I talked about make plans before you become a crypto millionaire. And I talked about my mm -hmm. story before I even got into crypto. It was, it, it was all about getting into these, these online businesses, these real estates, and then figured out that, hey, making a boatload of money doesn't really make a big difference until you, until you have purpose. And without a purpose-driven life, 
life just sucks. So I'm glad that you are getting out there and doing things for the community, especially for, uh, you know, these kids, these orphans. That's fantastic. Rob, I, I remember that guest post you made. That was more than two years ago when you made yeah. that. It was a really good, it was a really good post. People love that. I probably should um, regenerate that again, bring it up. There's a lot of new members I haven't seen it yet, but, but you're right about that. You know, to me, you know, I think the whole, <laughs> this sounds weird, but I think the whole universe is like a blockchain. Like everything is on the blockchain, everything you do. And for, for me, it's like leaving a, a stamp, leaving a legacy behind and not, it's not like an ego driven thing. Yeah. Uh, maybe it is a little bit, to be honest with you, but, but yeah, you know, I want to, you know, when I'm gone, we're not going to be here forever. When I'm gone, I want to, I want people to say, man, that digital Dave, he did a lot. He's got, he did this, he did this. He didn't, um, Mm-hmm. you know, get, uh, get rich and just say, you know, you know, bye-bye everybody or whatever. He, you know, continued to contribute to the blockchain space, the crypto space, the decentralization space, and, uh, and then helping, you know, you've, you got to help, you don't have to, but I think it's important, um, for your, for your own soul, I guess, you know, so that's pretty deep, but, uh, to help others because to have, to have the means to help others and not do that. I think that's, that's kind of like asking for it. I think, I think karma, can be good, kind to you. It can be uh, harsh as well. Yeah. And well, I mean, people watching for, so for you watching the, the video at home, just know, it, of course, there's going to be people out there that just want to accumulate and accumulate and not really give too much back. And those are, mm-hmm. those are psychopaths. Those are crazy people in, in all honesty. Dave, mm-hmm. you're, you're in Thailand. You could have been sipping Mai Tais on the beach every day, but what a crappy life that would have been, right? Just to be just there enjoying it by yourself, maybe with some beautiful young lady, whatever else. But I mean, to, to not give back would be kind of crap. That would be an absolutely miserable life to do that. And people fantasize about that, sipping uh, oh. drinks on the, on the beach all day long. Yeah. That would last, that last two weeks. Then they're going to be like ready to do something, you know? So that's, <laughs> that's a misnomer for sure. But um, yeah, you would go crazy. You know, and, and people, I've been in Thailand a long time, uh, approaching a decade. And there are some people that, come here they have they still have their purpose and there's some people that come here and they just they're at the bars every single night and that is kind of what that's what they do now they just hang out and um nothing wrong with that itself uh in in itself but if that's really your purpose if people really lose their passion their purpose um you know i don't know maybe that's just not for me though there's nothing wrong with that necessarily there's that's just not for me i think staying busy keeps you younger keeps you young looking and uh, keeps you sharp, keeps, uh, keeps everything working properly. Yeah. Look at me. I'm 72 years old. That's amazing. You so, look great yeah. for 72, Rob. Man. I, I'm really, I'm trying social security, all that stuff. So you know what? I mean, just, just talking about all those things, let's try to help some people. Dave, how do you see this bear market playing out? Because there's so many different macro events going on right now. There's so many things. You have inflation, you have a housing market, you have the Fed not pivoting. You've got this potential events between the United States and China and Taiwan and such. All these, these macro events really play into the, the actual crypto market. How do you see this bear market playing out? Is it the same thing over and over again? Or do you see like there's going to be some big, long extensions? I don't think it's going to be a four-year deal, three-year bear market. But here's what I'm thinking here, Rob, is that we have the midterms coming up, right, in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, I think and October is really traditionally you know, that's Black Monday, right? Yeah. I think October, something crazy could happen and we might see a dip in the market that might freak a lot of people out. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying to try to time it because I'm right, because I'm right, I'm wrong a lot. You, you all know that. Um, <laughs> We're all wrong. <laughs> I'll admit, you know, yeah. we got some hits and we got some uh, hellacious misses too. So I'll, I'll say that. Um, but I say, don't, you know, the thing with crypto, you don't want to time anything. Timing is just the, it's something you never want to try to do. You just want to accumulate. But I think October could be kind of rough for, for some people. We're seeing some strength in the market now. Um, we, could, we could see something happen before the, the elections in the U.S. Um, I think it might be. Here's, here's my guess, Rob, hmm. is I think it's going to be early 2023 when we start to see some real strength in the market again. You know, that could I've heard a lot of people say that, too, because they talk about, well, when we start to see that if the inflation starts to go down, then the, then the Fed and Jerome Powell can say, oh, we did our job. You know, uh, inflation is going down. We're not going to raise rates as much or maybe not at all moving forward. And then maybe with this uh, quantitative tightening, which today it's, what is it? It's like August 9th, 10th or something like that. We still haven't really t- really started that. So when they start to do the quantitative tightening, not the, t- the quantitative easing, maybe into 2023, Q1, Q2, 
that's when the fireworks happen. But again, if let's say me and Dave are wrong, right? And we think, well, that, that's not the big thing. Would, it, would anybody begrudge us if we started to take off like a rocket ship in like December <laughs> or, or, or November of this year? Mm. Or if, if it does play out, that's what? Uh, August, September, October, November, December. That's like six, seven months of just accumulation. That's how I see it. I mean, that's where the real wealth is at is the accumulation phase. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a lot of people don't see this. You know, we're, you and I both, Rob, are, are seasoned uh, crypto investors. But the people that are coming in now, they want to they want to make money you know, pretty quickly. Um, the real wealth is uh, waiting a few years, actually. You know, it, it may take three, four years. I mean, four years is kind of like the magic number, it seems like, for crypto. It seems yeah. like no matter where you buy, four years later, you're most likely going to be in profit. That's if you buy at like the absolute top, maybe five years, maybe, you know, in that range, in that realm, in that realm, because what Bitcoin's now 23,000. If you bought at the peak at uh, the 17 peak or early 18 peak at 20,000, you're still up. You're still up more than 10%. Yeah, even which, after all this, all this, all this stuff's going on in the market. Yeah, which which is crazy. And you know what, Dave? When did you when did you get in, into crypto? 16, 17, 15? Uh, early seventeen. Yeah. Yeah, and then like like when you said about about the four years, it's the same thing with me. Like, and that's why it never made sense to me. Like when people would say, "We got to hold on forever and diamond hands and never sell," I'm like, mm -hmm. well, that doesn't make any sense because at some point I'm going to sell. I want to sell, and if I wouldn't have sold a little bit of my Bitcoin, which I mean, w along the way, I've done uh, other sales for, for crypto. I'd be up 10% in five years. That's not the greatest of all time. So yeah, four years makes a lot of sense. And I know like when I, when I, I remember what, just like what you said about buying at the top, I bought at the top around 17,000, 18,000, around 2017. I didn't buy 19.5. But uh, as time went on, I was just like, well, is this, was this a good play? I'll just dollar cost average and see where it comes out. Now here we are. So I can see that. Any any advice for for those ones who are got in twenty twenty one? You got to wait a little bit. You know, here, here's here's what I say too. You know, we say DCA dollar cost average all the time. Yeah, that's that's really really a strategy. Now I get it. Times are tough for a lot of people. They some people have a lot of people lost their income, lost their jobs, and they're like, you know, I'm tapped out. I can't DCA. Um, you, know, you know what I say now is you you, you wait. You wait. DCA, if you can, if you have a, a steady uh, income, if you cannot, then you wait and you be patient. And it's hard. It's the hardest thing in the world for a lot of people to hold, especially when you've got you still got all the basically the masses still think crypto is a scam. They think NFT is a huge scam. Yeah. And uh, they say, yeah, crypto is just nuts. You know, it's it's done. It's finished. I keep hearing that a lot. Crypto, you'll, you know, will never make anybody any money. I keep hearing that. And that's people have been saying that for since Bitcoin was born, you know, for what, 13, 14 years ago, um, that's going to go, it's going to die. Right. You know, uh, crypto is not going away. A blockchain is not going away. NFTs are not going away. It, it, some are obviously a lot of them will, but the ones with utility and, and has a, a really good community, they will be around and probably be nice assets to have. But, um, yeah, just DCA if you can, if you can, do you have to be patient? Yeah, man. I remember in, in 20, in 2018, everybody said Bitcoin was dead. All crypto is dead. And it was all a Ponzi. Congratulations. You just made the dumbest mistake of your life. I was like, mm -hmm. I just don't see it. I can, I, I see the value, especially with these projects. And for everybody watching, there's a great website. It's called 99 Bitcoins. And you go there, 99bitcoins.com, click on obituaries. And in the last, just the last year, Bitcoin has died 461 times. But if you go all the way back, these, here's all the stories all the way back in 2010 which it was 461 times of when Bitcoin has died. So it's very nice to see this, especially in like bull runs, when people say, mm -hmm. ah, it's just gonna, it's just a Ponzi. And then in the, in the bear market, it's a Ponzi. And in a bull market, no, it's not gonna work out and you're dumb. And then even up here and up here, and up, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's always gonna be the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah, solid distraction, <laughs> solid distraction. You know, it works though. Um, these stories do freak out a lot of people. And this is why, I, like, like I've said before, and previous videos and in Patreon, I've said, uh, I've turned off the TV a long, long time ago because it really basically controls how, it controls your mind, if you just put it bluntly. It controls how people think and view things and it controls how people make decisions. And I say, just turn that sucker off. Don't yeah. even turn it on, uh, unless you're hooking it up to to watch YouTube or something like that or whatever. <laughs> but 
<laughs> then you can, then you can. But I play the newest uh, play to earn game on the on W on the Web three. But um, yeah, man, uh, it's blockchain is not going away. This is where everything is going to be. Uh, everything and eventually too. And um, NFTs people really don't quite understand NFTs. They think it's just art and, and eight pictures. But NFTs are actually going to be. Uh, I'm segueing a little bit here, Rob. Um, mm -hmm. NFTs are going to be um, how you access uh, virtual content, real life content, real life experiences. Um, how you uh, verify ownership of something like a house. You know, when you sell a house in, in, in a decade or less, a little bit less than a decade, you're probably, it's probably going to be on an NFT and it's going to eliminate the need for attorneys and accountants and all that other stuff. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm digressing a bit here. But um, yeah, man. Yeah. We're, yeah. No, I was going to say, like, I mean, just so, so everybody out there thinking about the NFTs. And, and of course, we can talk about digital IDs and, of course, uh, the real estate and tracking and all that stuff. But just remember this, like, I don't know which NFT platform is going to be the next big thing. That's why I'm mm -hmm. big into like layer one solutions, because I don't know, because that's yeah. that's where to where to go for. And then, Dave, before we get to the, the, the next question, uh, any projects, talk, just walk us through real quick about like what was one of your best buys over all this time since 20 early 2017? to now like when what did you buy that was like super cheap and then when you like actually cash out it was like you know you did a pretty pretty good uh, roi yeah t fuel is the the biggest grand slam um nobody was paying attention to it everybody said just buy i like theta theta's done great too by the way yeah. um it's retraced a lot of course everything is retraced a lot since it's high of last year but um theta did well t fuel did extremely well it went up like um 100x almost and everybody was just nobody said no just buy theta i said no no actually t fuel um is is, is a nice player theta is good too that's fine that's wrong with that i think t fuel is really yeah. is really good and uh, I, a lot of people didn't like it or some people didn't like it because it has an inflation set yeah. to it but the inflation is offset by the burning factor because it acts as gas for uh mm. for the theta blockchain so it, it offsets that um so that was definitely the biggest winner but you know but rob cardano did well too I was, and I, oh. here's a listen. I'm going to go back to the Cardano story, and you may have heard it before, but back in 17 or early, maybe early 18, I bought Cardano at 90 cents and then it peaked out at $1. twenty, and then it just went down to nothing, right? Went down to yeah. three, four cents. When it went down to a nickel, I made my first YouTube video. I said, I'm going to, I'm buying these. It's like buying dollar bills for a nickel. <laughs> and I, I don't know if you remember that or not. You probably yeah. said the same thing. I know you're a big Cardano fan. I am. And yeah, I remember, I, I remember buying it at seven and eight cents. And this is one of the ones where I, I picked it up around 60, 70 cents back in these days. I'm like, oh, it looks pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it just crashed down. And, of course, this is when I told my wife, I'm like, hey, we can sell everything, but I'm not in the business of, make, of losing money. So I'm just going to dollar cost average. And I just kept buying because it was so cheap. Mm -hmm. It was seven cents. And, of course, Charles would always talk about smart contracts. I'm like, sure, whenever that's going to happen. And it happened. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. of course, mainnet launch. I'm like, that's never going to happen. That happened. And I'm like, damn, you guys are so slow. But hey, they're always up all the time and no one's ever hacked them. So, and then this was like three cents forever. And of course yeah. now. Uh, but, yeah. but look at all the wealth that you accumulated during that period. So this is why I'm saying that the real wealth is during the bear markets. Cause you're, you're basically picking up dollar bills for three, four five cents, right? <laughs> that's the real wealth that that's where the real wealth is. So it's, maybe you didn't cash out. Maybe someone didn't cash out when it hit a $3, but you still have a lot of Cardano. Um, a lot of people still have a lot of, a lot of these assets. You know, these are, these are hard assets. They're not inflationary, with exception of a few like T fuel, but that's uh, that's ca uh, counterbalanced um, with the uh, with the burn mechanism. But um, these are hard assets, so there's only so much Cardano is ever going to be around. There's only going to be so much Theta is going to be around, and Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera. True. So my my whole thing, Rob, is is that I know you, I know you always you say you know no one ever went, went broke taking a profit, and you you could have sold out your Bitcoin at the peak. You would have three. I remember reading your tweet. You could have three times. Your Bitcoin, if you sold the, the challenge is that and there's nothing wrong with taking profits, uh, that, nothing wrong at all. I think it's great. The challenge is, is you have to try to time it. You know, when when do I take the profits? Do you have that one decision? Do I should I've sold it at 35, 40, 45, and then it goes up 60? That's fine. You still made some good money. So yeah. you, have to, you have to make another decision after that. When do I buy back in? So you have to try the time. There's two there's two critical timing points that you have to try to make. So if, you really have to be on top of your game. And I'm not totally convinced that um, that some of these chartists are really are, are that accurate it says this this thing is uh, it's a bear flag it's going to do this going to go down but 
then sometimes it just comes out of the blue and goes up and goes, does the opposite of what people say it's going to do. So I'm not convinced about that. You know, I'm, I'm into the fundamentals and um, not to the, uh, to the technical charts. Yeah. And you know what, what this, you know, what's funny about, about Cardano and we talked about in the very beginning about the, uh, the price predictions. This mm -hmm. was, this was my exits, my exit strategy back then. And of course, like what Dave just talked about was like, you know, just accumulate, just, just wait. But I think it's a bigger lesson just to diversify a little bit, not mm -hmm. just put everything into Bitcoin, not just put everything into tomato coin or whatever else it is. But like, like, like for me, like this one for the, for the Ethereum, like I thought it would go to ten thousand dollars, and of course I was wrong. But at least I said, "Hey, I'm going to sell it two thousand, then I'm going to sell it five thousand, seven thousand. I missed it because the all-time high was forty-eight fifteen. Mm -hmm. Chainlink, I said the same thing. I'm like, I, I think it's going to go to. I thought it would go to like thirty-five dollars. It actually went to fifty bucks, and it worked out okay. And then of course Cardano was the one that actually did do well. I thought it was going to go to mm -hmm. three bucks, and it did well two ninety-seven. But I sold it a buck ten, a buck eighty, two twenty, two sixty. And then I sold, mm -hmm. I, I set out, instead of going at three bucks, I was going to sell at 289. Unfortunately, I got greedy and didn't sell. But it's just, a, it's just a lesson that it doesn't matter if you screw up a couple of times. Just make sure that you just have, you know, just a couple of winners here. Because a lot of sometimes those winners actually take place of all that crappy loser that you had. So Yeah, it could be like even 10 to 1. You could have nine losers and, and one winner that takes that makes up for all those other nine losses and then some. Absolutely. Exactly. I, I, yeah, I agree with you, Rob. I'm I'm big on the uh, diversification. I don't like having just a couple of things, uh, a couple of cryptos. I like, um, you know, having uh, a minimum of 10, I think. But I don't think maybe 10 might be a, a lot for a lot of people. 20s yeah. you might be a lot for a lot of people. Yeah, but, I mean, okay, what? so Dave, let me ask you this. How many different cryptos have you had at one point? Oh, at I know one point at one point when, when you like maybe just got in you're like i want to have that some of that some of this some yeah of that. 25 or 30 yeah, yeah that's way too many that's rookie that's rookie numbers dave i've had <laughs> i've okay. had i've had over 40 i can guarantee it at one time because i was just okay. buying like in 2017 i was just buying 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 listening to everybody yeah, else yeah. and of course i got burnt on a, on a bunch of them but again the the winners kind of kind of saved you as you just kind of just just write out and accumulate because at some point you figure out which ones are going to actually be here for the long haul. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. Ethereum was a big one too, so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Now, here's the thing about accumulating all the coins. This always happens during a bull market. That's when people really start picking up all these projects. They think, <laughs> oh, this thing's because things start popping off, yeah. like um, like Shiba Inu. I mean, that thing just went up a million percent out of nowhere, yeah. you know. Um, and it's oh, then they think, oh, I missed Shiba. Now I'm gonna. That's when people start buying five or ten different of these really, really low cap coins. I wouldn't call them gems yet. I don't want to call them S coins either, but uh, maybe they, they turn out okay. This is why we get 30 to 40 coins because you want to catch that next uh, Shiba Inu or, or even Dogecoin did, did extremely well. And oh, yeah. um, that's why. And then, and then when the bear market comes and then these things are worth nothing, then you start uh, consolidating. Then your, your portfolio has, has like 12 in it now. <laughs> exactly. And you know what's funny is that every bear market, uh, you see a lot more Bitcoin maximalists being being uh, minted a lot of those guys who are like i got burnt on this and this and this but bitcoin say it's that's really what it comes down to i've seen more yeah. bitcoin maxis born in this market in this bear market than i have even even the last one and it, it really does mm. come down to centralized finance or centralized exchanges too yeah i mean it's everywhere obviously and that's where that's that's the gateway drug right that's the gateway crypto too is this bitcoin everybody starts at bitcoin then they go to another place but um Hey, let me ask you something, Rob. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the script here a little bit. Sure. What's your, I know I know you love Cardano. I, I know you uh, love Bitcoin. Um, what do you like? What do you like though? Um, uh, what do you like right now? As far as like, um, I don't know. What do you? What's your What's your favorite project right now? So, well, my favorite besides project, the blue chips. But, well, besides the blue chips, like I'm big mm -hmm. on on layer one solutions, and of course, Bitcoin. I think those are like they're they really are the, are the blue chips. But moving outside of that. If you really want to get into where it's like a little bit risky, which I have a second channel, it's called Dan Degen. That's like mm -hmm. the risky gambler type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of projects. There was this one called Gensukishi, and it was a play to earn game. And what I liked about it was because it had a built in community. It, it already was a game that was, that was thriving on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, Android, and then also Apple iOS. So they already had a game already out for years and they transferred over and they, and they, they partnered with Polygon Studios 
and they made Gensukishi, which the and actually did pretty well. Picked up for a penny, went all the way up to a buck forty-five. Everybody's happy, right? Well, now it's now it dropped down to forty cents, and now it's even lower than that because they had to delay the launch of the actual game. Doesn't matter. I thought that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then the the other one I think is gonna do well is that one we talked about, Sweatcoin, just mm-hmm. because it's already been around three years. It's got it's the nut between number one and number five health and fitness app globally on Android and iOS. And it's got uh, over like, it's, it has millions and millions of users. It already has 12 million crypto wallets because it's not a crypto yet. It won't be a crypto uh, token until September 12th. So everything that you accumulate on your phone, and it's super easy, you don't have to buy anything, it's free to use. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tokens come to your phone and then once it goes over in September 12th, you're gonna get airdropped a bunch of sweat tokens. I, I think it's like the biggest no brainer of all time. But uh, so those two, okay. those two, I really like. Uh, that's what I got. So what, yeah, I, guess okay. I, I watched your video about Sweatcoin. You, um, I guess it's a little bit more than 30 days ago, I think, when you oh, released yeah. it. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah I watched that and um, I was like, yeah, it looks, it looks really interesting. I hope it does well. Um, just real quick, uh, I hate to talk tech. Is it, is it ERC20 or, or what blockchain is it on? Near Protocol. So, oh, it's on near. Okay, okay. So, so, so that's the thing. That's why I, I've said I think that near will do well if they can handle the transactions, the the, the TPS and the throughput. Because remember, yeah. all these people that have come over, you've, you've got over. I want to say it's a hundred million. It's a hundred million users that have actually downloaded the app over the last three years. They've got twelve plus million wallets, and they're all going to be transacting. And those twelve million twelve million wallets were, were made since April, April, May, June, July. So four mm-hmm. months. Okay. If, if near protocol can handle that throughput and not buckle, that should take off. And of course, mm-hmm. if you take a look at them, they're, they're building it right now. And they talk about we're, we are a sharding technology, which is where ETH 2.0 hopes to be at some point. And I'm not saying that it's like better than ETH. I'm just saying that if they, they can do sharding and do those transactions per second over, then it'll do pretty well. But it's a big question. It's a big gamble. Mm-hmm. And that's why I talk about it on Dan Deejay, not the not the regular one. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, man, I hope it takes off. It might be worth uh, a, a pun on that one. It may be worth uh, putting a little bit of money in that one. I'm not sure. I'm not recommending or whatever, but um, it might uh, maybe it does well. I hope it does. It might be or it might be a total bomb, which I guess will leave yeah. me my next question, Dave. What, 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 what do you got something else? No, no. Let's hear okay. it. Okay. I'm going to ask you. So I'll flip it on you. What projects that you got are looking good? You know, I love Theta. You know, yeah. I love... <laughs> a lot of well yeah theta and um and t fuel i still like t fuel i you know went to 60 cents it's now 90 percent less 90 percent discount i sure. I'm like it even more now than i did when we know it was 40 to 60 cents um there's a new one now i don't a lot of people don't they know about it or they don't know about it i don't know they i don't know it's kind of weird but theta actually has a third coin in their ecosystem and it's actually necessary people say oh it's, it's redundant it's not actually not redundant it's called theta drop or in the tickers T drop. Okay. And to me, T drop has that same vibe that T fuel had a couple of years ago when nobody in the world was paying attention to it. And I said, wait a minute, I think T fuel is something special. And then it went hundred X. Um, I think T drop has the potential to do what T fuel did. If worst case, maybe, maybe 10 to 15 X, I would say that's about a worst case. Again, this is NFA non, not financial advice by any means. Um, yeah. So it's just under a penny. For a tea drop. Hey, let me tell you a little bit about it, why I like it. Okay, there's a site called thetadrop.com, which you obviously you have NFTs on there. I have NFTs on there. Oh, yeah. Um, this is a Theta Labs project. And um, this all ties in with Web3. All these NFTs are all tying in together with the Theta project. And um, I think that T Drop, I think T Drop has the potential. Yeah, Dan Warwick, um, Katy Perry, Price is Right. There's some big names on there, American Idol. Um, <laughs> It's I huge. It. Yeah. Yeah. Price is right. Yeah. 50th uh, anniversary, 50th year. No. Um, I think Theta Drop has the potential to rival OpenSea in, in, in a few years, not this mm-hmm. year or next year. I think eventually it has the potential to rival OpenSea. Interesting. So, by the T Drop acts as the governance token for ThetaDrop.com. So, it acts huh. as a governance token. So, people like to have their say so. They like to govern. They like to control whatever. And we'll just say they like to have their say-so. That sounds a lot better anyways. That's probably what it is. People want to have their say-so. They want to help control the direction of things, just like yeah. Theta Token 
Um, mm -hmm. That's the governance token for the whole Theta network. This is the this is separate. It has to be separate. This is the governance token for Theta Drop. Okay. And it's less it's less than an opinion. Let me give you a little price history. So you got you got some history here. Yeah. When they when they dropped it, this is a TNT twenty token. When they dropped it, um, there's twenty oh. uh, actually ten billion, a maximum twenty billion. It it was at four cents for a while. Then it, I said, man, that's a lot higher than I thought it would be. Then it um, went down to two cents. And then I talked about it. And I think I made a video about it. I said, I, I really like T-Drop. I think it could do something really special. Then it went down to half a cent. And of course, I got all the, I got all the hate and all that. Oh, David, you picked a crappy one here. But now it's, <laughs> so it was a half a cent for a while, starting to creep up to just under a penny now. I, I, I think it's, it might be worth a pun on this one as well. Yeah, it might be worth looking at. Yeah, like, I mean, I remember when he talked about T fuel, I'm like, Dave, that doesn't make sense to me. And of course, it went up like crazy, uh, a crazy amount. But again, so for you watching at home, this is not like, hey, go out there and buy it. Because here's, here's the thing. If you buy it and it goes up high, I'll dump on you. I'll dump on you all the coins that I get if I ever buy this. So just think to yourself, this is what I always think. If I'm looking at a project, I want to get into it for the long haul and then just sell a little bit along the way. But I wanna stay in there for, for a bit of time. Like with Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano and, and Avalanche and Polkadot and Solana, I want, I think those layer ones could do pretty well. So I'll probably be in there for a while, but I gotta take my profits along the way, just how it is. Mm -hmm. So this is not investment advice and uh, we'll just go from there. So that was, okay, so that one interesting. I didn't know they even had that. What's uh, anything else that you got? Nobody, nobody knows it's even it, it even exists. Like there's, I think I said earlier, there's two thousand people on the coin market cap watch list. Two thousand. It's like wow. nobody. It's like my neighborhood knows about it. That's it, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my the key is here, Rob. In, in my investment opinion, is first of all, it's not easy to get. You basically you can get a uh, T drop on Gate.io, but American citizens are not welcome there, and other countries too. Now, welcome on Gate.io. Shocker. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, really, the, the the way to get is either Gate.io. If you can't, there's oh. always, what I say with crypto, there's always an option. As you can go to uh, Vault, uh, what is it? VaultSwap.finance. VaultSwap.finance. Vault wow. And you can you can swap T Fuel for it that way. It's a little bit technical because you need to learn how to use MetaMask. And you mm -hmm. need to also, after that, you need to switch it to the Theta network. So mm -hmm. if, if someone can figure that out, it takes some steps. It is a little bit technical. If you figure that out, you can swap T fuel for a T drop. And that's how anybody wow. in the world can get it. There's no restrictions yeah. whatsoever. That's crazy. Yeah, there's only three that I can see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's unknown. And the other thing huh. what I was wanting to say is that we want to get these at if we can, we want to get these assets before it's listed on Binance. Because I know Binance is going to be listing. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I'm not on talks with them or anything, but I'm sure <laughs> Binance is going to be listing T drop. And then there's going to have a million users or whatever the user base is for Binance. And I don't think it's going to be a penny any longer or yeah. half a penny. I think it's going to go a bit, do a bit better. Especially if they put them, put them on their launch pad. Like I've seen a lot of those projects just blow up when they get there. Now, yeah, I'm not, it, not saying that, but if it does, whew, pretty good. If it goes on launch pad, it could do even better. It could do even better. They may do it. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. But um, that that's my, probably my biggest um, low cap gym. I want to call it. That's probably my biggest. And I'll, I, I'm still, I'm still uh, heavy on Theta and T fuel. Yeah, I call it the uh, tri transcendent trifecta. Tri what transcendent? Transcendent. I came up with that word. I can't even say it. <laughs> I came up with the word. I came up with the saying. Transcendent trifecta, or just a trifecta. I think uh, someone said, "Hey, if you, Dave, you only had to buy three in your portfolio, what would it be? It would be those three. I really believe in the Theta Labs project. I wouldn't be totally comfortable having three. I, I'll tell you, I would, I would definitely want to have Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. Whatever your flavor you choose is totally okay. If you don't like either of those, get Monero. That's fine. Of course, Monero could have problems again, uh, just like the other, uh, you know, Tornado Cash. They got something going on with that. Who knows that, you know, the, the challenge with Monero is that um, exchanges, a lot of exchanges don't want to mess with it because it's a privacy coin. There could be issues with privacy coins in the future, just what we've seen. We saw the news yesterday. Um, but Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash or Monero, whatever flavor you like, I think it's good to have some type of quote unquote cash type coin where yeah. actually somebody accepts it because crypto is called cryptocurrency. There's 20,000 of them listed on CMC. But how many currencies do people actually hold in their in their wallet? Very little. No. You know, currency, currency, currency means you can spend it. I'm going to go I'm going to go and buy a new computer with this or I'm going to go buy a meal. Um, they're probably not going to take Cardano. They're going to take Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. Maybe Monero, Monero, probably not Monero, but um, they'll take one of those two. And they might take Ethereum as well. Ethereum could qualify too. 
Yeah, I can see that. It's just, we're just so early. That's really what it comes down to. So, yeah, yeah. well, Dave, we're coming up on the 35 minute mark. I think uh, we've said it, we've said as much as we possibly can without giving away all the secrets. So I just want to say, it's always good to catch up. I know it's been too long, uh, but thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. You're very welcome, Rob. Let's uh, let's not wait two years next time, huh? or a year uh, and a half. I <laughs> yeah, let's. Well, you know what? Let's let, let's get back together in the Q Q one Q two twenty twenty three, when the when hopefully everything has to take off. All right. Well, well, you know, we did we did a video one time, Rob, and uh, when you when you launched it, when you made it live on YouTube, yeah. and the uh, the bull market took off, and we were, you and I were joking on Twitter, <laughs> like, yeah, we, we did that. It. Yeah, we did that. It. We saved the market. You know, yeah. maybe this will do it too. But what we should do, though, if, if this saves or not, you know, it'd be kind of funny if it did a second time. But yeah, that's a great idea. What we should do is when this thing starts to take off again, whenever that is, then we should uh, let's definitely hop on. Either I'll come on, you know, if, if it's okay, I'll come on your channel or you come on mine. Either way, it's fine. Exactly. First time it's luck. Second time it's just a fact. All right. Dave, there you go. thanks again for coming on. I appreciate it. Okay. You're welcome, Rob. All right. Take care now. Jump back.